<laughs> Alright you guys, welcome back to my channel. Really quickly, I'm gonna go ahead and pass the baton off to my good friend Nico. I am so excited to be able to bring you this style of content uh, on this channel and hopefully we can do more of these uh, moving forward. Now, you are gonna be learning the full guitar arrangement for a solo guitar finger style arrangement of You Say Run coming out of the My Hero Academia anime and this is top notch quality. I am so excited. Uh, really quickly, I should go ahead and tell you that if you need any of the materials, links are down below to a Google Drive where you can download the uh, the actual tab and notation for this, which Nico is kind enough to provide absolutely free of charge. Now, if you are looking for a point of reference for this video or just the full cover in general, I highly recommend you go ahead and check out Nico's channel. Links down below for all of that. And that way you can see the full cover and how this sounds all encapsulating all just one solid playthrough beautifully performed by my good friend Nico. So without further ado, I'm going to pass the baton over to him. He is a, a professional guitarist here in the Los Angeles area in Southern California and a very dear friend of mine. So without further ado, hats off to Nico and enjoy the lesson, you guys. Hey there, my name is Nico. I'm a guitarist, as you can see. I'm also a teacher, but the third thing is I'm a pretty big manga and anime fan. I'm just letting you know ahead of time, this isn't the easiest arrangement. If you know the original, there's a lot of moving parts. You've got a rhythm section, strings, horns, and even a choir at the end. So it's pretty high octane and again, complex. That being said, I'm pretty proud of this arrangement. I think it's really strong and sounds great. And I'm gonna walk through it with you right now. So enough talking, let's get to the music. All right, we're starting at the top here. Quick thing to mention, the beginning is just an acapella, no accompaniment really, no bass notes, no chords. Just a raw playthrough of that central melody of the intro. Now, the important thing here is leave the open strings ringing because if you don't, it'll sound kind of square. We're trying to sound large and what helps us sound large is we've got those open strings ringing, almost like a harp. Okay? Measure nine, we've pretty much cycling through chords. We've got an open E minor chord, C over G to G, kind of two triads. A to a D over F sharp. Now one big thing to note here, guys, we've got an interesting pattern here. Thumb, pointer, and middle. P-I-M, if you're familiar with classical guitar finger notation. This pattern is gonna appear all the time. And so I would pause here and really get familiar with that pattern if it's kind of strange to you. You just sit there and cycle through it over your favorite chords. Finally, we've closed off this section with the same melody, this time with a bass note under each of them. E, G, a C, and an F sharp. Little cascading D major nine type of voicing, D add nine, I guess you could call it, because there's no C sharp. It's a substitute for that killing drum fill. Big E minor strum and we're in the B section, the main section that if you think of you say run, you're probably singing this section. Here, I'm literally just playing the melody and just holding that G bass note. You wanna hold that So that you get a sustained motion of that G kind of just sitting throughout that entire melody. There's that pattern. One of my favorite parts of the song here. A C major 7 sharp 11 for you theory nerds. So pull off F sharp. over F sharp. Hmm? 
there you go. You should get that clean. And then kind of an A with an F sharp. Da, 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 da. I'm leveraging that open string to get the melody note. Little B5, kind of like a B power chord without the top note. Just straightforward playing the melody with the bass note. Now we go to a C chord. Kind of major seven there. Here, that chord right there at measure 31 is kind of like a C chord, but just literally slid up. And so I'm going the melody there, and I'm holding the bass note. You can kind of think of it as a triad, if you're familiar with those. A sus. Now we're on the C section. Kind of a western sounding, kind of lead in note right there. Very similar to the previous section. The melody's kind of built into that cascading line. A little western lead in going into measure thirty eight. Now, here that motion repeats with a D chord instead of an A. And that little lead in instead of down here is now here. Open B, third fret, and then open E. Here, I, I like to slide up with my ring finger into the melody. And I'm using my open strings there to again, give me that larger sense of harmony. You seen this one before? It's that cascading pattern. Now at this point, I'm hitting some open strings to give my pinky finger time to slide from seven to five. high E string. Here I've got third fret on the A, open G, and fifth on the B string. Out of an open chimey C chord. And then just your straightforward D chord right there. Section D, you're doing great, let's keep going. One of the harder sections here, but one of the more beautiful sections. the F sharps over the C. Um, you'll, you'll see how that works in a second. C chord. I like to go pointer and pinky to set up for that, um, that pointer to come back to the second fret. That kind of G major seven over B. I've kind of got the um, middle finger, pinky, and pointer. C major seven, sharp 11, kind of. I like to use the pointer finger there. D chord. Be sure your strings aren't buzzing. Moving on from there, like an A, A minor, nine kind of thing. Here is 
really interesting one. You've got a B. Kind of like a B minor seven. But kind of played in pieces. Two, zero, two. Open B. Third fret on the D string. Sorry, third fret. D on the B string. There you go. Kind of got tongue twistered there. And then pinky finger reaching for that F sharp. So the melody. Excuse my singing. <laughs> Next, we have a little cascading line here. The melody's built in. One thing I would do if I were you is emphasize beats one and three. Kind of gives that smooth feeling going down. Repeats again in 58. Now I'm going to pause here and let you know this is one of the trickier parts, but one of my favorite parts again. Pointer finger on the E, 2nd fret D string, hammer on to the pinky, then open G and a D there. And then the G on the 3rd fret of the E string completes that. It's a very harp-like way of playing, like a G major 7. After that G major 7 kind of thing, A minor, G over B. Now we got an A, a minor over C, kind of third, second, second, to kind of like a B, like a B minor flat 13 maybe. minor without the C, giving it a 9. Kind of that sus motion that we saw from the intro. Now here, I really strongly recommend you use your ring finger for that third fret D, because you're going to need it later when we get here. C major add nine. Really popular chord. Now, I'm just cascading motion with that D and ring out. I think we're more than halfway now. So if you've made it this far, kudos to you. Let me put it down so you can see my thumb. Kudos to you. Now we're moving on to the part where there's uh, really broken down. We've got some strings going. And um, this is where the tears start. So, leading into this section, one of the best things you can do is bar that D chord, so you free up your ring finger and your pointer finger to get those melody notes. Now, it's really important to keep that G and B string ringing because that kind of gives a nice illusion of other instruments behind you, but also it sustains the note in case you need to let go of that, that, uh, that middle finger because that's quite the stretch. See that? D sus to D. E minor. Now this whole section here, I like to tell people, it kind of gets classical because we use a lot of bars here. Kind of B minor bar chord. But then you're going to release the bar to get that open E, kind of like a B minor 11. And then I'm shifting to kind of every guitarist's favorite, um, A minor 9 or C major 7 voicing.
kind of a drop two kind of thing for you jazz heads. I'm a bit of a jazz head myself. Seven, five, five, five. Kind of a little classical trick um, using open strings while you're up here in the higher registers of the guitar. So there I'm at eight and seven with the D string ringing out. Same positioning, but now with the E in the bass, I make an E minor seven. How nifty is that? D. Um, you've got seven, seven, ten. Sorry, not an E on the bass. You've got seven, seven, ten, and a D in the bass. Now you've got seven and eight with G in the bass as an open string. And that gives me time to shift back to home base, open position land here. And to hit that D string, and then we return. Let me play that whole section again, because that can be a little bit difficult. I'll go from here. Um, bar chord, release to the drop two chord, open D. Open E, open D, open G, open D. New stuff here, kind of a walk up. Kind of like a D power chord, just kind of D5. Open strings again. 7th fret on the E string and just open there with the other strings. Open strings, um, open G there and open A, A minor 7 voicing, G over B, and then you've seen that motion before, use your pinky and your pointer. Now we get to F. Drives a little bit harder here. Same melody, put down an octave with quarter note bass. Possible. My bad. I can't talk and play well at the same time. Follow. And then. Right there, we kind of got an E minor. D over F sharp. D7 over F sharp. G. And then the melody goes down to the A. Use my singing, but um, there's no other way to demonstrate it. You notice I'm a lot of the time I'm using some unorthodox fingers to play that melody as one bass note is being held down consistently. Repeats. Little walk up. A minor. G over B again. Now that same C cascading motion happens there again. Really pleasant. If you've made it this far, congratulations, you're in the home stretch now. Final hurrah of the orchestral section. E minor. Kind of a partial, almost like a B. Let me know what you jazz, I'm a bit of a jazz head too, but let me know what you think. I think it's a B, like a flat six. Very pretty. 
going into a B minor 7 voicing. And then here, it's really essential that your ring finger goes on that D, 3rd fret B string. And it stays there. Um, don't feel like you need to go... Right, why work harder if you don't have to? Right? That's gonna be a simple move, but kind of tricky, so take some time with that. So there, kind of D over F sharp, um, D over F, D7 over F sharp. A, G over B. Now this section comes to a bit of why I kind of like anime music. It's not super complex, but they have a lot of hidden jazz and classical kind of harmonic influences that I think spice up the song. So here, kind of C major seven, kind of like an A7, an A9, almost like a, like an A9 to a D sus here. Very cool. So you've got um, the C sharp on the A string and the E on the D string, fourth fret and second fret. And the rest are just open G and B. It's easier than it looks, but it sounds really awesome. Um, really cool unexpected move there at the end by the composer. Moving on, now we're at measure 116. seen this before. This part, you stay on your toes here. C chord, open D, and then cascading through the G over B. Okay, we're almost there. We're gonna move to an A minor chord here. Now one of my favorite bits of the song, you've got a C, but the C doesn't really have that E like it normally does. It's got the G up top, and the big part of this is that F sharp. Okay. Very victorious and kind of bouncy there. We end that section. Five voicing, two, three, five. Now you're in the home stretch. You've seen this next part H before at the end of the intro. It's literally that opening riff, this time with bass notes, and we just repeat that four times. chords. Now, the important thing here is to get a mute going. That doesn't sound nearly as cool because there's no separation of the notes. Now that's cool. I've kind, of, I've kind of muted in between each one and used my nail to kind of give me some extra sparkle compared to that. All right. Well, that's the whole song. Thanks, Benjamin, for uh, featuring me on your channel, and look forward to more content like this coming your way soon. Take good care.
All right, you guys, we are here at the end. And how'd it go? Let me know. I've honestly been trying to learn this on this side for a while now. I've had the materials a lot longer than you guys have had. Uh, and I know it's I know it's difficult. Believe me, I know it's difficult. Uh, but good luck out there. And if you do manage to learn this piece, go ahead and upload it and tag, uh, you know, myself or Nico on Twitter. And we would love to see uh, your performance. We honestly would. So on that note, thank you, Nico. And of course, as always, if you guys would like to go ahead and support the channel, go ahead and mash that like button down below. It lets me know that you guys are watching. I can continue to make more content just like this. And of course, as always, nothing has changed. If you would like to go ahead and support the channel, go ahead and mash that subscribe button. We would love to have you here in the community. All right, you guys, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Good night, you guys.